What's up everyone and welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be looking at the Lumu or the Lumu Power as it's uh, called. So let's roll that intro and then let's get started. So if you're interested in the Lumu Power you've probably watched a million and one videos. So I'm not going to really do an unboxing, we'll have a quick look um, at the packaging and what's entailed and then we're going to go straight on to the device. So let's have a quick look at the packaging. So the, the packaging, I've got to admit I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's, um, it comes from kind of recycled cardboard so I like that they're thinking about the environment but for the amount you pay for the, the, uh, the device I'm glad that they pack it so well. So this box is absolutely solid. I mean, I can get this box, I, I can squeeze it with all my uh, power and it doesn't even put a dent in the box. And the reason for that is when you open it, you come up against this little cardboard cutout. The Luma uh, is inside there, I've taken it out for starters. You pull the first one, it even has a number one on it to tell you it's the first one. Then you've got the second one with a number two, you pull that out and then the Lumo is, um, is inside this one. So you pull that one out, there's another one, you pull that one out and then there's the, the case, the leather case that comes with it. So if it is being sent by Amazon or whoever you use to get your photographic equipment from, rest assured that it's not going to get damaged. I mean each card is wafer thick and um, it's got um, a crisscross going through it, so it gives strength. Every card that's put in gives strength to it, so you can stand on that. Nothing's going to happen to the product inside. Uh, <coughs> have to excuse me, uh, I'm full of a cold at the moment, so sorry if I keep coughing. On the back, it's just got a little diagram saying, sort of, welcome to the Lumo um, family. Uh, what it entails and what you can use it for. Now, unfortunately, they only make this for ISO devices, so Apple devices. I could imagine that eventually they will make it for Android, but sorry, Android users, you're just going to have to wait that bit longer. Um, when I've got the um, uh, Lumo in my hand, I'll explain some of the features that I would like to see come along to it. So that's the box, uh, starting with, say, price. I'm going to say um, in the UK here you're looking around about £249 but don't let that scare you off because this device is actually two devices in one, in fact it's probably about five devices in one. So let's get the device and then let's talk about that. So here it is, this is the Lumu and I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that right, if I'm not my apologies. Um, all I can find is people talking about it on uh, YouTube, so hopefully that is right. So it comes in this little sort of vintage leather pouch, which we can just open and take the unit out like so. So this is the unit, flat on one side, a dome on the other, and then it's got uh, the, um, the prong for the ISO devices, so like the lightning connector. So that is the unit just there. Now, like I said, it is only made for ISO devices. I can see in the future they're making it for Android devices. Everything's kind of moving over to the USB-C now. So maybe this little connector on the end, um, in future updates, maybe this will get replaced for a USB-C version. And again, Apple, they get into this role of changing their connectors because obviously it makes you buy more accessories and you buy the same accessories again because you need them. So maybe Apple will change their next generation iPhones to a USB-C. We, we don't know, uh, maybe they do, but if not, I can very well see them making um, a USB-C type in the future. So sorry Android users, you're gonna have to wait. So yes, this does cost a lot of money. It's 249 pound here in the UK. Uh, but I have to say it really is worth it. So if I was to get a light meter So this is uh, my light meter. This is a, a Sekonic uh, light master and it's the L uh, 478 DR so it's got the um, pocket wizard built into it now this 
you're looking at £350 just for this on its own. Yes, it'll uh, trigger lights as you're flashing it as well, uh, but it's not hard, no hardship if you've got uh, the flash trigger in your hand just to pop it and then this will take the reading. Now, why is the Lumu better than uh, the Sekonic light meter? Well, look at it straight away. I'm going to carry this round in my bag or I'm going to carry this round in my pocket. It's going to take no room up in my bag. This also is uh, not just um, not just a, a light meter, but it's a, a colour meter as well. So I can actually measure the Kelvin in this room. In fact, I measured the Kelvin in this room for the video and then just dialed it straight into this camera. And I'm going to show you how it works and how we can measure the Kelvin and how we can measure the light. So you do need, obviously, uh, an iPhone or an iPad. You can actually plug it straight into an iPad. So again, you need the app on the um, on your phone, and it's just called the Light Meter from uh, Lumu. And you simply just get it, and if I plug it in like so, as soon as I plug it in, it asks me if I want to let the app open it. I say yes, and it opens up. Don't worry, you can put it this way, and it'll automatically turn round. Now, let's say... I want to measure the colour temperature in here. So you go to colour temperature and we can see there that it's loaded the colour temperature up. It gives you the colour temperature on the top with a little scale and down the bottom here it actually gives you what the tint is. And that is, that is absolutely amazing because when we're doing the editing, maybe um, I'm doing photos and I can uh, take a, a colour temperature reading, I know what the tint is so when I'm actually editing the picture I can actually adjust for that tint as well. So that's what it looks like on the actual device itself. So to do to to read the colour in this room, it's the flat surface on the on the back that obviously reads the colour, not the dome. So don't hold it up um, and think you're measuring the colour temperature with this part, the dome, you're not. It's actually the flat side that measures it. So let's just take a reading. Uh, I, you simply hit the button, so hit the button here to take a reading, and in this room I'm at 5080 Kelvin, okay? So that is exactly, <coughs> excuse me, that is exactly what I've dialed into this, ca uh, this camera. I'm filming on the A7R Mark II, um, and I did all the settings from this as well. So I actually took a, an ambient reading, and I also took a colour temperature reading as well. So put the colour temperature reading and hopefully you can see because I'm not even going to uh, adjust anything on this video I'm going to uh, post it as I filmed it out the camera so you can see how accurate this is so let's say I want to get the, the video readings um, and set up for my camera well so you go back to the, the menu here and then it's got something called cine and video which is just here on the side so let's press cine and video and the difference with the cine and video it allows you to do your frame rate your shutter um, as well so we've also got the iso down here so i can see that uh, i'm at uh, iso 640 at 24 frames a second and my uh, shutter is at a 50th so now we're taking a reading of the ambient light we need to use this part so i can just simply press that take a reading and it says that I'm at f4 which is absolutely spot on if you want to have that facing you and take a reading it's not a problem you can actually just unplug it pop it straight in so now I'm holding the dome outwards and I can just hit that take a reading and it's still saying f4 it tells you on the top there if you've actually got the dome there's like a little uh, arrow facing the dome so it's telling you in this mode you're using the dome and not the flat surface. So maybe you want to use it for uh, your photography. I think this is a brilliant for wedding photographers because we can have this very small device. We've always got our phone on us, plug it in. We're in that room in the evening with all those mixed colours uh, coming in, um, all the tungsten lights. And if we can, say, dial in a reading from where they're reading the speeches into our camera every single shot's going to be spot on so you can go um, to um, so photo so let me go actually back so it says there photo ambient so we just go on to photo ambient and then I've got all the settings here dialed in this is it 
So I will just hit that. And it actually tells me here that I'm actually two stops underexposed at uh, 160 for ISO 400. So if I tap to 640, um, let's get a, if I go ISO 500 now, then it actually tells me at F2 I'm perfectly exposed here. So you see what you can do, you can just take your base reading, but then you can actually change here um, the values and it will tell you what the f-stop is. So if you don't want to be at f2, you can actually change the ISO value or maybe you can change the, um, uh, the, the shutter value as well. We can obviously change that up and it'll give you the correct reading every time. So obviously you see at uh, 160 from ISO 400, if I go to that, I'm at ISO 500, or I can change that to be say 2.5 and I need to be at ISO 1000. So as a wedding photographer, I actually think this little device is so valuable. The, the meter in our cameras, it is accurate to a degree, um, but without getting too technical, how it reads it from a distance is different than how a light meter reads it from where the subject is. So you always want to take a, a reading from where the subject is back to the camera, so where you think you're gonna be standing. That's the best way because the light is actually falling onto the subject, so onto the person reading the speech. You just go to that table, uh, point it back at the crowd, take a reading and jobs are good and you've got your settings to go. <coughs> So moving on to uh, the flash settings, we've got down here photo flash. So now it's in the flash mode again, it's using the dome here. And the simple way to trigger it, you've got your flash set up, your, you've got your trigger on your camera. If you just give it a little pop test on the uh, camera, this is always looking for that flash and it'll pick it up and it gives you a perfect reading. Now I've uh, done some uh, shots with this over the weekend using this device. So I'll throw them up uh, now. So these photos, they're unedited straight out of the camera and all the exposures were actually taken with uh, this little device. So that's all I used. And I was just using one flash um, uh, and um, a reflector here and there to, uh, to get the shots. So you can see it's actually very accurate, and especially when it's coming to different skin tones. We've obviously got uh, sort of a, a dark skin tone and then we've got a, a light skin tone and it's getting the perfect readings every time. So we're not blowing out any highlights or we're not losing any shadows. So that is kind of um, a look at the Luma. Um, it's got a lot more features. Obviously we can uh, go into the settings, you can have your luminance so we can actually do uh, a reading here. Again, it tells you when you're doing it in the luminance, there's a little arrow pointing to the flat side. So if we just do a, a luminous reading, I'm at 428 uh, looks. So that's what the light falling on me is at the moment. So uh, overall, the settings that you get, you can download the app without it because you, you can actually still use the spot meter part without this, but all the other uh, features will be grayed out. When you've got the Luma plugged in, you'll have uh, obviously uh, the luminance, you'll have photo ambient, uh, photo spot meter, cine video, photo flash, color temperature and chromatic, uh, I can't even pronounce the word. That's a little bit out of my depth and a little bit um, even more technical for me. Uh, but basically if you're working in the RGB um, realm on your monitors, you can take a reading and you can really dial in to get the absolute precise settings. So maybe if someone knows how to use that, they can throw that down in the comment and explain a little bit more about that uh, particular setting. Um, so that is a kind of a look over. You simply just unplug it. Now, one thing I would suggest is don't plug this in and then walk around and shove it in your back pocket and then throw it on a table um, because you are asking for things to happen. Even though it is strength, you can see we've got this like metal ring going around uh, the plastic dome. The actual lightning connector, even though it's it's a thick plastic and it's reinforced around, it is only a small lightning connector. So when we plug this in, you know you've only got that very small lightning connector there that um, that is holding it up. So if you do knock it hard, it is going to bend. So. I would suggest, suggest plug it in, use it. Once you've used it, 
then put it uh, back in its little pouch. This is a nice little touch. It's a quite a thick leather pouch. Fits in nicely. And there we go. That is it in the bag. You've got your light meter. And I do have to say, again, for wedding photographers, this is a must. We can read our ambient light reading. We can read our flash light reading. We can also read our color temperature. Now that is where this outweighs this straight away because this is just a light meter if i needed to read my color temperature i would have to go out and buy another dedicated meter just to read my color temperature and then the value of both of them together would probably be around about 600 pound this is 249 it does everything and more so i recommend you buying one of these i've been testing it now for uh, probably a week now used it all over the weekend and it is flawless so I'm really looking forward to having this in my arsenal and really getting to uh, grips with nailing that Kelvin every single time so that's it um, if you do want to purchase one the link will be down below so you can uh, head over to either uh, Amazon or the flash center it's uh, a bit cheaper on Amazon uh, but you have to wait, uh, I think it's about five, uh, four to five days on Amazon in the UK to uh, post it because it's like an international um, uh, shipping. Um, or you can go to the Flash Centre where it's £249 and you can get it the next day. So that's entirely up to you. Hope that's helped you out. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my other channels on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And other than that, enjoy watching the rest of these videos. See ya.